here this morning to celebrate the groundbreaking for the Energy Research Laboratory, uh, which is uh, being uh, sponsored uh, by uh, uh, Steve Huff, an alum, a 1973 alum, the same year that I graduated, I discovered the, this morning. Uh, the building that we're going to be breaking ground for today is going to be constructed of a revolutionary new kind of concrete reinforced with steel fibers called helix, which will add tremendous tensile strength. Uh, this concrete is resistant to high winds, perhaps even the force of an F5 hurricane, impacts and the tremors of strong earthquakes. So this, this project came into existence through um, dialogue that I've had with Steve uh, over the past couple of years um, on energy monitoring and what is the thermal efficiency of a building constructed out of this material. What is the minimum amount of energy that needs to be put into a building in order to keep it at a, a comfortable temperature? And, uh, and this building will be able to provide that. Uh, it's going to be a very controlled environment. So we're actually looking for the practical minimum amount of energy. Energy requirements are a contentious issue these days. I mean, almost anything you look at, whether it's fossil fuels or, or nuclear power or any kind of power that's available is fraught with either political or regulatory uncertainty and difficulties. Uh, the one thing everybody does agree on is that if you can save energy to start with, that that's a good thing. That's really the greenest of all energy is the energy that you save. And that's really what we're about with this project. The idea is can you save significant amount of energy with a highly durable, easy to construct technology. The idea here is to document that, to build the test the physics models, to build the instrumentation, to, uh, to measure that and to demonstrate the effectiveness of high thermal mass building envelopes. Well, the building is designed as a ground truth test case. So it has a high thermal mass uh, environment, a lot of insulation on the outside, uh, uh, thick concrete walls, that provide both disaster resistance and high thermal mass on the inside. So it's, it's designed to be big enough to develop real ground truth. So when you, when you develop a theory of how the building should operate, you're able to measure and prove, not just on a laboratory coupon size, but on a, on a small scale structure, what it actually does. The idea then is that this building, which is going to be you know, a couple thousand square feet, can be then extrapolated. We'll have enough confidence that we can extrapolate that to much larger buildings. So we'll develop the, the software, the testing methodologies, the instrumentation, and the uh, thermodynamic models, prove it out on this structure, which will be right here on campus. That way we'll ultimately be able to predict the performance, the energy performance of just about any building in any climate. So it turns out that if you look at what's involved in this, it's very interdisciplinary. It's a combination of what's required in physics, from physics departments, contributions from sort of the physics model, the thermodynamics of the system, and then computer science. We have to build instrumentation and write the software to document the energy usage, what's going on, where it's happening, uh, put it in a database, collate it, assimilate it, analyze it, present it on a user interface. So it's, a, it's an interdisciplinary uh, uh, project between physics, computer science, mathematics, and that, that sort of thing is ideally addressed at, at this kind of academic environment. You know, we live in a time when energy supply is a very contentious issue, and I think the one thing everybody does agree on is that if you can save energy, that's the best way to deal with it. Turns out about 40% of the energy used in the country is used by buildings, and that includes transportation, cars, automobiles. About 40% of the entire energy consumption in the United States is used by buildings, and about half of that is used to heat and cool them. So if we can have an effect on that, if we can move that needle even just a little bit, you're talking about billions of dollars of energy savings over the life cycle of the building. And as it turns out with these kind of buildings, you have very long life cycles, measured in centuries to thousands of years, not, not decades. So what we do here today, even though it seems like a small project, can have an enormous influence. Um, we are grateful to Steve Hoff for, for, for joining us and for sponsoring this project, uh, both for the students who will be doing research here and the faculty who will be involved with them, but for the significance of the findings that we, we hope uh, the research will produce. 
Uh, he's given Hampton Sydney College a tremendous opportunity. Uh, we're the only college in the country where research like this will be conducted and its implications for um, conservation and safety are immense. To me, this building and its associated uh, projects represents an amazing opportunity for Hamden Sydney uh, to continue to do what it does best, and that is to teach our students and to interact with them in research projects. Uh, Hamden Sydney College has prided itself on working uh, on student faculty collaboration uh, and the energy and the excitement uh, and the innovation that comes from that. And uh, Mr. Huff's uh, uh, bringing this project to us is giving us an opportunity to bring students and faculty together along with, with him to see what kinds of ideas and uh, uh, we can generate, uh, new ideas we can generate and how we can um, also just study the long-term impact of this kind of building. It's, it's something that will have an impact on the entire college and the way that we do things. Here. So I think the thing that, that Hamden Sydney offers is that learning environment. This is all, this project is all about learning. What, what can this, what is the capability of this building? And that's what we do best, is we teach our students in an, uh, an intimate research environment, one-on-one -on -one, uh, faculty and students. Hamden Sydney College is one of the oldest colleges in the country, founded in 1775. Two of our founding members members of our first board were James Madison and Patrick Henry. Um, the mission of the college is to form good men and good citizens in an atmosphere of sound learning. So everything we do here is designed to encourage our young men to learn and grow. And this project fits in with our mission perfectly.